saw this story yesterday, and I I thought I there was a typo because they were talking about a 14-team playoff, and I go, we didn't even get to the 12-team playoff, and now we're talking about, or at least there's discussions about a 14-team playoff in college football. So uh, Fritzy reached out to Heather Dinich, who covers the sport for uh, the Mothership, national college football reporter, and she's kind enough to join us. What happened to 12, Heather, that now we're already talking about 14? 12 is still here. Now everybody can get set for 12-team playoff for each of the next two seasons. College football fans are going to see that this fall. But the contract runs out. The 12-year college football playoff contract with ESPN runs out following the 2025 season. So the discussion is, then what? Then what happens? So that's why they're talking about a 14-team playoff now because it's all tangled up with the TV contract. The deal that's on the table is this two years plus six more years. And so what do they want the format to look like in those six years? And of course, as you know, this is all stemming from sweeping conference realignment, which has made the SEC and the Big Ten the biggest, wealthiest conferences in the country. And they're saying, hey, we've got more teams. We've got better teams. We want more spots. We want more money. And here we are. Is this a a Big Ten SEC initiative? They're the ones pushing this? I'm not so sure how much the SEC is pushing it. Our sources have indicated definitively that Big Ten Commissioner Tony Petiti was the first to raise the question of maybe 16 teams. And now the discussion has been focused more on 14 teams. And next week, our understanding, according to sources, is that the FBS commissioners and Notre Dame leadership will try to convene again through a video conference and maybe get a little bit clearer of a picture because the clock is ticking as far as the TV contract goes. These guys are, are trying to get this done quickly. Give me the format. How does this work? Let's say it's the the 12-team playoff. How many of these games to start out with are home games for teams? And how many are labeled bowl games? In the 12-team playoff, we're talking about what we're going to see this fall. Um, so in the 12 team playoff, it's a five plus seven format for this season. That means the five highest ranked conference champions plus the next seven best teams are going to be in this thing. The four highest ranked conference champions will receive a first round buy. Notre Dame can't get one of those because they can't be a conference champion. So we'll start there. The <laughs> ranking on selection day is going to look different than the seating that happens for the bracket minutes after it. So here's an example for you. Alabama's number one in the country. Georgia's number three. They play each other in the SEC championship game. Well, Georgia doesn't have a title because they lose to Alabama. They can't get a first round by as a conference champion. So the highest they can get as a seed would be number five, even though they might be the committee's number three team. So Georgia would have to win four straight games in this 12-team system this year to win the national title, if that makes sense. But are these labeled bowl games? Are they just playoff games? Or, like, how does the bowl system still exist in conjunction with the uh, playoffs? So the New Year's Six Bowls are still part of this system, but the first round games are home games. So once you get past the first round games, then you start, then the committee, part of their job on selection day when they're slotting that bracket is to say, okay, these four teams with the bye are going to go to Cotton Peach, Fiesta, Orange Sugar, whatever it might be. And then they move on towards the semifinals and the the national championship on January 20th. Notre Dame's role in all of this is what? Well, they're going to have to win four straight games to win a national title, too, in this 12-team system, regardless of how they finish. They could be the committee's number one team in the country on selection day and get that fifth seed minutes later because they can't win a conference championship. And they are okay with that. 
let's make sure everybody, you know, there's, there's a lot of people out there wringing hands and a lot of angst over, oh, Notre Dame can't get one of those first round buys. Jack Swarwick, their athletic director, was one of the four people who wrote that. So they're okay with that. They're excited about uh, having to get to host a, a first round game. If that's how it works out if they're in, in the playoff. And if it does go to 14 teams, the same holds true in that they couldn't get a guaranteed spot because they can't win a conference. And they would have to count on one of those at-large spots, even in a 14-team playoff. Are they trying to incentivize Notre Dame to join a conference? No. And I don't think that that even that would incentivize them to change their stance on it. And quite frankly, I think one of the questions that is ultimately going to come up at some point, particularly from the coaches, is the value of playing in the conference championship game. You know, well, we could lose and you drop to that number five seed, et cetera, et cetera. There are, are different views on that. But my understanding is that the conference championship games aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Does this change Florida State's mindset of leaving the ACC? They're a wild card, aren't they? And, and all of these conversations, you know, I think that the biggest thing that could change their mindset and further push them towards trying to escape is if, if they do wind up granting three automatic bids to the SEC and the Big Ten and two to the ACC and the Big 12. I, again, I can't stress the word if enough because having covered this for over a decade, Anything can happen. That's just the idea that's gotten the most traction to this point. And so there are people in the ACC who certainly are not thrilled about this idea. And I'm guessing Florida State's probably one of them. But is this going to be voted on like soon for the, the 14 teams? So next week's meeting, I'm hoping that there's more information as to how close there are they are towards that. And something like this does have to get passed to the presidents. There are 11 presidents and chancellors who have the authority to actually change the playoff. They have to be unanimous on it and they ha would have to get their stamp of approval. But even if they say, hey, this is what we want to do, the three, three, two, two, one, one, however you want to describe it, uh, they still have to go back on their campuses and talk to their presidents and chancellors about this, if that's the way that they want to go. But again, I know CFP executive director, Bill Hancock has said publicly that the timeline is mid March and we are creeping up on that. It's always fascinating. Always fascinating. Thank you, Heather. We appreciate your insights on this. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on Heather Dinich. Senior writer for ESPN.com and uh, college football reporter for The Mothership.